shotguns are quite uncommon in the airsoft field. They are more challenging to use due to the slower rate of fire and limited ammo capacity. Here I'm going to review, disassemble and upgrade the Tokyo Marui Creature, the short green gas shotgun. It's great in CQB skirmishes, but you might be in deep trouble if the opponent is beyond 30 to 40 meters and has an AEG. As your first airsoft gun, a shotgun or a sniper rifle are not ideal choices due to their challenging use. In all aspects, the Breacher and the newer gas shotguns are better than the old Marui spring power shotguns like this SPAS-12. The SPAS has shorter range, it's more heavier to rack and it has virtually no upgrade possibilities. On the contrary, the Breacher is among the most customizable shotguns, and with a tracer it looks like a doom gun. All the gameplay in this video is with the internally non-upgraded version of the Breacher. Externally, the Breacher is mostly metal. Only the foregrip and the pistol grip are plastic polymer. However, the metal used in the receiver is probably zinc alloy, very common used in Japanese airsoft guns. It is cheap and less durable than aluminium or steel. However, the outer barrel, I heard, is aluminium construct. The magazines look like shotgun shells. Each shell magazine carries up to 30 BBs. But no worries, there are even drum magazines available and through an adapter like I do here, I use an M4 magazine, which carries around 100 BBs. The gas tank is located in the pistol grip. How long does one gas tank last? It's highly advisable to fill the gas tank always when you have a possibility, even between short 15-20 minute games. I have quite often run out of gas, and that's why I nowadays carry an additional gas tank. I have seen from YouTube that some players HBA tap their breacher and then there is no worries about the small gas tank anymore. Like the real steel counterpart, the breacher has no sights. The real world counterpart is meant to break doors and locks, basically for short distances when you do not need to aim. I could aim, but with this thing, I don't have to. The drawback with the breacher is that the hop-up is fixed. It's not possible to adjust it and it works best with 0 0.2, 0 0.23 and 0.25 gram BBs. The racking sound of the shotgun is cool, although the shooting sound is very soft. It's not loud like in some pistols, like the high kappa in this instance. Next, FPS testing before the upgrades. Marui shotguns work with blue gas or green gas. Without reinforced internals, stronger gases would break the gun. In indoor temperature of 21 Celsius, with basic green gas, the FPS ranges from 84 to 89 meters per second. If you were to perform a total renovation of the breacher, it would cost much more than the gun itself. I couldn't afford a full renovation so I had to choose the most important available parts. The nozzle is often a vulnerable part. This aluminium nozzle is designed to work with higher gas pressures. 
the steel valve pin is supposed to increase the gun power by 12%. A stronger hammer spring also increases the FPS. With the upgrades the gun works with higher pressures, that's why the steel lever set. And the hop-up chamber with a better air seal, that is usually one of the most important upgrades. Perhaps the most single important upgrade part would have been a precision barrel set, but it was sold out from everywhere. The increase in the gun's muzzle velocity with these upgrade parts was really noticeable. The testing before and after the upgrades was done in the same room temperature with the same green gas and the same 0.2 gram BBs. The 3 BB shooting mode was used for testing instead of the 6 BBs per shot. And four. One hundred and three. Ninety five. One hundred and one. Before the upgrades, the muzzle velocity was slightly below ninety, and after the upgrades, it ranged from ninety five to one hundred and four. So this is the gas tank. Green gas is filled in from the top. When it is inserted back, it often leaks gas when it is inserted too carefully. That's why I turn it upside down and press fast and hard. Aku and Ines or Donald and Daisy in English provided their assistance. Because I was not aware of previous disassembly videos of the preacher, I filmed the entire process so I can go back if I don't remember where each part belongs. The gun disassembly starts by removing two Phillips screws from inside the pistol grip. Then you will need a 10 mm hex socket screwdriver to remove the backflow prevention valve and the valve release nozzle that is just behind it. This black plastic piece is the valve release nozzle. The original pistol grip is very good. However, if you want to change it, there are custom options and even M4 stocks can be installed to the end of the gun. The grip is very solid, it has no wobble whatsoever. This is the removal of the grip mount. All these rubber o-rings need to be lubed with silicon when the gun is reassembled. The hammer needs to be used to remove two large bolts from the receiver. Unfortunately, I didn't find previous guides on how to disassemble the preacher, so flying springs were my problem. It took me some time to figure out that you have to pull the foregrip to remove the trigger guide or the trigger plate. The gun disassembly made me think what will be the long-term durability of the breacher. The scaffold that holds all the internals is plastic and unfortunately it's probably ABS plastic. A lot of small pieces that could be lost easily. Now removing the barrel.
it really took quite a lot of time to remove this metal piece that holds the outer barrel in place. For future disassemblies, I worked on thinning down this metal part by using a file to ensure an easier fit in the future. This lever set here will be replaced. new hop-up chamber replace the old plastic one. The old hop-up rubbers will be used again with this new chamber. The reassembly is pretty straightforward.
With this switch system, you change between the 3 or 6 BBs per shot modes. This is the hammer mechanism, and the hammer spring will be replaced with a stronger one. And this is the new aluminium cylinder head that is more durable under stronger gas pressures. The stock version of the valve pin is brass and this replacement part is steel.
crazy Teflon tape people roll Teflon tape everywhere. And finally, the steel lever set.
don't forget to install the loading gate at this phase of the reassembly. Actually, it is easier to install the two springs later when the metal receiver is installed back. The springs are the easiest to install back here.
everything is working. Most difficult part of the reassembly, fitting that metal plate inside the outer barrel and with that screw. So, in a summary, if you really want a pump action shotgun for the CQP field, then the Marui Breacher is really a good choice. It is solid, fun to play with, it's not the most easy to disassemble, but it is highly upgradable compared to many other shotguns. Yet upgrading is very expensive. Although it is externally metal, internally it is too much plastic 